All right, so if the Eagles would win, obviously that would be then. But that's also saying now if the Bucks won and the Niners won, then the Niners would go to Green Bay. He'll you know probably I mean? get a, a defensive coordinator position right away. There's no though. question about that. Because you no start, question. like, think about some of these openings. Like, right, welcome back to the show, hour number two. And uh, we gotta we gotta say hello to Ray on the uh, stream. Ray Facillo. He says that we're not paying attention to any of his great nuggets. What's that? That, he, that he's giving us. And he said, "I went back to look for a nugget." And it said, "He says Shaq Barrett has a slight ACL tear, but he missed this past week's game because of COVID." Right. But he's right. saying that he also has a slight tear in his ACL. So, well, what, what, but angry. What do you mean? What do, what do I seem confused at? Barry, I'm not you seem no. confused. Guess you're not over Saturday. Yeah. Said. What's what's confusing about what's confusing uh, about what's going on? You guys won. Okay, you guys won. Okay, you got it. I, I, no, no, you were confused by the bracket. Oh, the, the playoff yeah, bracket. Yeah. That's what was because confusing. I've seen two or three different brackets. That's why I'm saying it. I've seen two different two or three different brackets. Well, let's see what Xander has. He according right. to uh, to his chat, he said he found a bracket. Let's see. All right, so now I've seen this one. This is the one I saw. Well, see, I didn't see this one. That's that, I didn't see this one. All right, so that indicates to me that the Eagles would play the Packers yes. if they win. Yes. But it also indicates to me that if the Bucks win, they'd play the Packers. And that doesn't seem right, that you would have the one and two seed playing in the division. Ah, da, da. Exactly, exactly. That that's just seems kind of stupid to me. Right, so that's why I've, I've seen another bracket where it was down, um, it was down lower. And they would play one of these teams down here as opposed to playing the number two team in the bracket. That's why I didn't understand that. Yeah, but th this kind of looks like the winner of Dallas and the Niners played the winner of the Rams and the Cardinals right here. Right. That looks yep. like that there. That's but I just think like it's kind of bizarre that the Buccaneers, you know, the two seed could be playing Green Bay. The one seed. That early. Exactly. That doesn't know. make sense. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. But it's not the first time something doesn't make sense that it actually <laughs> exists. So ESPN says the lowest seed in the NFC gets the Packers. All right. So if the Eagles would win, obviously that would be then. But that's also saying now if the Bucks won and the Niners won, then the Niners would go to Green Bay. Okay. See, that's the way it should work out if that's right. true. Well, that might be the case. It could be. That may be why the bracket's looking like it is right there. Yeah. With, like in the middle. It's a as little opposed weird. To being there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is the case. Like if if, if the Bucks win mm -hmm. and the, in, they would play the winner between Dallas and San Fran. Yeah, Angry Al, he's, he's all over it. Yeah. Number one always plays the lowest seed. Yeah, that's what I always thought. Right. So, but yeah. with, the, with the way this bracket is kind of made, it kind of gives you the idea that if the Bucks win, they they move right in here, which doesn't seem right. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. What do you think about these other? What do you think about that Dallas Niners game? That's gonna be a good game. I think it's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, you know, you got a, two physical teams. Yeah. And um, you know, two two cool quarterbacks. You know, are, are almost playing the same right now. Um. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be some physical play there. How about the Niners coming back and winning that? I was watching a little bit of it um, yesterday afternoon, and then the Rams were up at halftime. I want to say, like, I think it was like maybe 17 3 or something like that. And they San Francisco them. must have come back big time in a second in the third quarter. Yeah, it was 17 3, and evidently San Francisco scored uh, three touchdowns in the second half. And he owns McVeigh. <laughs> Seriously. He beat him I, I again, think he's man. Won, I think he's won like six in a row against him. No, it's like eight in a row. Is it eight? It's like seven or eight in a row, yeah. What? Yeah, they've been killing him. Wow. And and Garoppolo played with that uh, bad hand. Apparently, he's got a lot of pain in between the webbing of his hand, his throwing hand, in between his thumb and his, his index finger. Well, he was handing it off. 
A lot also. Well, so. he threw it 32 times. He threw for over 300 yards. Big plays, too. Yeah. Really big plays. I mean, I just love how they use Debo Samuels. Yeah. I love – I mean, they hand him off as running back. They run jet sweeps with him. He threw then a pass they, yesterday. Right. He, he does it all for them. Yeah. He's that Swiss Army knife. And I, I think a lot of teams are, are moving towards that. You know, Cordero Patterson kind of yeah. set the mold in, in what you do. Right. With your athletic guys on the, you know, on the field. You it's know, like high like school. Percy Arvin. Yep. It's oh, like yep, high school right, football. Right. It's yep. like, all right, he's our best player. How, how can we get him the ball in, in 16 different ways and let him do things? Now, Basically, Cordero Patterson is. plays running back. He plays yeah. slot. He can play on the outside. He was a returner. He does everything. Mm-hmm. Everything for him. Cam Akers did nothing for the Rams. I didn't expect him to. I just saw I, I, Cooper Cup and Odell, two monsters, man. Yeah. Odell didn't do much. He only had two catches for 18 yards. Wow. Yeah. Stafford threw, two, Stafford threw two interceptions. You know, he's thrown eight interceptions in his last four games. What? He has eight touchdowns and eight interceptions in the in the final four games of the season. Well, he just gets back to being Stafford. That's all. Stafford is Stafford, man. He he's. But I mean that that games. game, the four five game, is is like yeah, Arizona. They lost yesterday again. They lost to Seattle. Yeah, that's Seattle. how the Rams stayed in the in the division win. That's how they got the division because they lost, but then because. Arizona lost. Los yeah, Angeles won one. the yep. division. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. Cooper Cup, man, is just, I mean, it's crazy how he gets open. He yeah. stays open. He's got a great Eastern beard. Eastern Washington. Man. He's got a that, great one. How about that beard he's got? <laughs> Dude. You don't see many blonde beards. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he looks very Nordic. Yeah. Like a Viking. Yeah, he? he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight from Eastern Washington. Mm-hmm. He looks like he's from Eastern Washington. <laughs> That's how I picture people up there. Blonde beards. <laughs> how about Detroit beating Green Bay yesterday? Oh, yeah. But this one, else, it was a Dallas game type of game, man. And Aaron played. I mean, Aaron Rodgers played a little bit. He had two touchdowns. Yeah, just a little bit, man. And, you know, they they really weren't trying to, you know, get anybody hurt, man. And that's the difference between, you know, back when I played yeah, and the way they play now. You know, you just didn't – we we never had the option of getting paid and playing in a game and not playing in a the game. These guys get that option now, man. I mean, could you – could I couldn't imagine saying, you know, coach comes to me and say, hey, uh, you're not going to play this game. We're going to hold you out. And we're still going to pay you also. That's like unheard of. Right. I cannot believe that. I still can't believe that Miami beats New England again and they, and the coach gets fired. Dude, that's what everybody's saying. I mean, you I, at, I just you, can't get over that. Look at your your, your Twitter feed, but that's what everybody's saying. What? Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Everybody's saying it from Brandon Marshall. Um, everybody's saying it. it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't, though, man. No, it doesn't. He got a raw deal, that guy. Benjamin Watson, Robert Griffin, you know, everybody's saying it. Damian Woody, he, Damian Woody says, I'm pissed about the floor is firing. It just doesn't make any sense, man. All right, here's um, somebody asked Benjamin Albright, uh, who's he's kind of got, he's got some inside sources in the league. He does radio out in Denver. Somebody asked him, can you explain the Flores firing? And he said his working relationships with his quarterback and general manager were not good. Constant staff turnover, especially at offensive coordinator. Owner decided to pull the plug. Hmm. I don't understand that, man. I mean, it just sounds like the, 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 the owner's just too involved in everything. Yeah. That's what that sounds like. Way too involved in day-to-day operations. I mean, what does he mean? You know, he doesn't have a good relationship with his quarterback. 
these are defensive minded coaches. Mm-hmm. Usually, offensive minded guys, you know, stick, you know, stick with their quarterback and everything else. It's not like you know, Tua was burning everything up. You right, know, he wasn't blowing the league out. No, so of course he had some questions. He probably wanted. He probably wanted Watson. He'll you know probably I mean? get uh, a defensive coordinator position right away. No though. question about that. Because no he starts question. like think about some of these openings. Like they're not going to bring a defensive coach in to no. Chicago. No, because they're going to no. bring a guy in that can work with that quarterback. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Uh, Denver just fired a defensive coach. Exactly. You know, do do they go out and fi- and hire another one? No. I don't think so. Exactly. Who else we got? Um, Minnesota. They just fired a defensive coach. All defensive coaches got fired, huh? Yeah. Wow. Except for Nagy. Las Vegas, this Bisaccia guy, all he does is go and get the Raiders into the playoffs, and he's going to get fired. <laughs> yeah. It's like, thanks a lot. <laughs> you know, you won 10 games. They're 10 and 7. Wow. That just goes to put, to put things in perspective, man. I mean, seriously. Flores gets fired after winning 19 games in two seasons. Right. You yeah, he missed at, uh, the playoffs. Uh, last year he won 10 games and missed the playoffs. Right. You look at um, you look what went on at Jacksonville and the Raiders. Both coaches got fired right in the middle of the season, which is crazy. Right. You know, you usually get one like that. We had two like that this year. Yeah. You had an email scandal. Yep. And you had Urban Meyer just like I, I don't even know how to describe what he did. Well, I know really. he kicked he he did kick me, he got his ass whooped. You believe that. <laughs> when he kicked it, he knew oh, he, he kicked, kicked the kicker. Yeah, yeah, he kicked the kicker. He so. kicked the kicker. <laughs> he got his ass whooped for that. Believe me. Yeah. I mean, the so. Saint, you know, the Saints, that's a, that was the biggest win of the year, beating the Saints, because that's what got him in. You look at the Saints, they're nine and eight, and they're out of the playoffs because they lost the tiebreaker to the Eagles on head to head. Well, yep. But that's the only above 500 team in the NFC that missed yep. the playoffs. In the AFC, you had one, two, three, three nine and eight teams missed the playoffs Colts, wow. Dolphins, and Chargers. How pissed off are they with the Chargers? Yeah, uh, they are hot. Yeah, yeah Angry yeah. Allen still on. How do I think that we, they're going to beat the goat? I mean, of course it's going to be tough, man. But I mean, yeah. at any given Sunday, you can get beat, bro. You, you, you know? tell Angry Al to just worry about uh, Debo Samuel and the 49ers, okay? <laughs> at this point, man, I'm looking at this game, mm-hmm. and. The only way, the only possible chance this Eagles team could 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 pull this off, man, if they start fast, yeah, and run the rock, man. They've got to start fast, run. I'm not even gonna say how you stop, how you stop, or how you beat the goat. You don't now, do that. Do you think yeah. uh, Miles Sanders will be available? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. They're pulling out all the stops, man. All right. You know, they're pulling out all the stuff, and it has nothing to do with the goat. I mean, we're gonna leave the goat to himself. Yeah, the, the goat's, goat's gonna goat. the goat's gonna do goat things. Exactly. You know, he's you, gonna you throw can't. for three hundred plus. He's gonna throw for a bunch of touchdowns. You're gonna have to keep pace with the goat. Exactly. Yeah. But the only way you can keep pace with the goat is to keep the goat off the field, which is why you run the rock, mm-hmm. which is why you score every single drive you have. You have to score every single drive. Yeah. And limit the goat to seven possessions. That's the only way you can win this game. There would have been one player uh, Saturday night that I would have rested for the entire game. Who's that? And that would have been Kelsey. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Exactly. Everybody else would have played at least two series. Yep. I, I, I believe so. That's the way I would have handled it. Because, I mean, everybody else can go out there and play, man. Yeah. Jordan Malata. I know he's a little, you know, beat up right now, but he should have played. Mm-hmm. Landon Dickerson, he's beat up a little bit. He still should have played. There's no way he shouldn't have played. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, how the hell does Nate Herbig? You know what I mean? Yeah. Come on. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Who was the offensive line? Like, can you rattle them off? 
Like I know uh, they had Dillard at left tackle. Yeah, Dillard was at left tackle. They had uh Toth go back to it. was Toth in there? Yes. But he had he ended up getting hurt and had to leave early. Brett Toth had to leave early. What about your boy Coyote? Coyote played. He did? How did he play? The guard. He played very well, too. Yeah. He played very, very well. Um hold on a second. Let me get let me get to the roster real fast. I don't even know these guys' names, but I know. You know what I mean? On this roster. That's how many guys that I remember when I when I read them off when they were elevating these guys from the practice squad on Saturday on the pregame <laughs> right. show. I'm like, who the hell are these guys? You know. Um I knew Huntley because they Opeta. had gotten him from uh Detroit. Yep, oh, okay, yep. okay, Opeta. Yeah, he's played some in the in the he's season played, already. Yeah, he's played a lot. Brett Toth played. Right. Um Jack Anderson. LaRaven La Clark. LaRaven Clark. Started at tackle. Okay. Raven Clark started a tackle. Um, then when um they gave Coyote an opportunity, he played also. Mm-hmm. Um what about this well, Jack Anderson cat? He's you know listed I don't, in here as a backup guard or, or center. I don't even remember. Yeah, he did come in. He did come in. He did come right. in, played center. Yep. Uh the center the center that came in after after Kelsey left in the game. I don't even know. I I never heard this guy before. Like half the guys out there, I didn't know who they were. You know what I mean? Yeah. This was a, it was a crazy game. How about your boy uh, Tyree Jackson blowing his ACL out? Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, that is crazy. He gets he one kinda, his first catch is a touchdown. He kind of didn't look very coordinated to me. No, kind of like Bambi out there. Didn't yeah, he? <laughs> didn't he? Like that, that's one because I was I was watching him because uh, another one of my buddies that was watching the game with us. He was like all about this guy from Buffalo, you know. He's, he thinks uh, you know he could be a real find. And then we're watching him. I'm like, man, he doesn't look very coordinated. He didn't look coordinated at all. Yeah, you know, even on a you know shovel pass touchdown mm-hmm. to um to him, he looked like he he caught it twice and then you went in for the score. So I loved yeah. it, man. But his first catch was a touchdown. He was targeted a couple times and he dropped the passes. But his first catch is a touchdown, so I was pretty excited for him for that. Yeah. So, um, and who was that other tight end dad in there? The uh, Noah Togai. Toga, yeah, he's he was in camp with him a lot. Noah Toga, he was he was in um he was in camp. He he looked pretty good. Yeah. In camp, I didn't think he was going to make the squad. I was surprised that they brought Richard Rogers back up. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought they would have everybody. Um, younger, but you know they kept him on the roster, kept him around. Yeah, uh, Jason Huntley played unbelievable. He has speed. He's a legit four four guy. He can run, man. He played well. Uh, Kendall Gainwell played pretty good too. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, Alan, on defensive side of the ball, I really love. I, I loved you know how um you know how the rookie played Milton. Man. Milton, Milton Williams, yeah. Milton Williams played like a beast, a beast. And and Zach McPherson, yes, he played like a beast. Um, how did Tay Gowan perform? Wasn't Tay that Gowan. the guy they got back from Arizona when they traded Earths? Yeah, but I, I didn't really notice him. I no, didn't notice didn't. him at all. Okay. I did notice uh, Scott, the guy they traded from from Jacksonville. He showed some flashes. You know, he played pretty well. He showed a couple flashes. Uh, Jacoby Stevens. Oh, you're talking about Josiah Scott. Yeah, Josiah Scott from from Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah, Jacoby Stevens. Jacoby Stevens. Yeah. He looked a little lost. You know, you could tell he wasn't he wasn't comfortable with playing in the position he was playing. You know, he was like that that hybrid safety type of guy. Mm -hmm. He got beat in the red zone a little bit. You know, tight ends. You know, kind of worked him a little bit. You know, but I, I mean, he he did show some potential while he was out there. Right. Showed a little potential. Boy, uh, Kayvon Wallace didn't look well at all. No, I mean, and I expected a lot from Kayvon Wallace. He didn't play well. I thought he was gonna play a lot better than what um, while he was out there, and he didn't play well. Mm. Um, boy, Ryan Kerrigan did nothing the entire season. He looked old too, bro. Yeah, he looked old. He made there. three total tackles for the entire season. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
talk about not not making an impact. Yeah, and there lies, you know, when you when you look at, you know, some of these moves how he's made, man. That you know, I expected a lot from him. Did I you? expect him to come in? Yeah, I expect him to come in and and and, and let it rip. You know, at least give us. You know, he had five sacks the year before. Mm-hmm. I thought he's going to at least give us five sacks again. He didn't even get close to the quarterback. How about he this looked. Andre Chachery guy? He got some run too in that game. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't pay any attention to him either. The safety. Yeah, I didn't yeah. pay attention to him. Some guys I just didn't notice, and they didn't jump out on the screen. So, no need to even talk about them. I wouldn't. I mean, have the guys you know looking at their their uh, jersey, and I'm like, who the hell is that? Teron Jackson had a couple of plays. Yeah, he did. Yeah, the guy from Coastal. But he 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 showed glimpses whenever he's had the opportunity to get in right. there. He's he showed glimpses. Yeah, getting off the ball, um, pass rushing. I don't know about his run stopping, but I know he can he can rush the passer. Um, my boy Hassan Ridgeway, he kind of looked a little old uh, this game also, man. He he mm. wasn't he wasn't as explosive as I usually saw him play. He wasn't that explosive at all. Um, he needs he needs some work, man. He definitely needs some work. But you know, some of these guys took advantage of their 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 time out there. Like Whiteside, J Jaw didn't show me anything. He lessened his ability to even play on special teams. I don't I mean I wouldn't even dress him now. Jalen Reger, he did nothing. These are the these are the games in which you go out there and you ball, right. you show you show that you know that you wanna play. These are the games you get in and you're interviewing for 31 other teams and they yeah. still didn't do anything. I mean, it's on film. Yeah, it's on I mean, film now. Everybody saw it. Yep. We all see it. Exactly. So, so you know, that's ridiculous. Now, I they see up here uh, someone named Ace Chapter One is, is wondering why we're questioning who played. We should trust the coach's instincts. No. He, his instincts... Uh, I mean, All I'm saying is it's been a, quite a while since this first team offense has gotten out to a good start. It's been since the New Orleans game. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, I'm still you have one chance in a playoff game, you know, exactly. Those first three or four, you got to score. Uh, you got to put up some points in your first two or three drives against Tampa or you're done. Well, you have to. Okay. Now you're playing to get the upper echelon oh. teams. You got to be able to ball. And and the reason why I'm 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 questioning the coach is he's got to show me. You know what I'm saying? He's got to show me. You know, he's still this is he's still young, he's still developing. Until I see it, you know, I is this the right decision? We'll see this next game. Yeah. We'll see if these guys are ready to go. They come out slow again. It's it was not the right decision. What which has been their status, you know, been what their status has been for the past five games. Mm-hmm. Going out slow and then coming out in the second half and then balling. You can't do that against a great team. Nope. You got to match their effort. So if you can't match their effort, man, it's, you'll be saw, home for uh you be home for the rest of the playoffs. I saw where uh you know Brady was speaking very complimentary of the I Eagles. Saw that too. Yep. Did you see that in the post game? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And he's been watching the film on us also. Uh-huh. And he understands that he's got to take he got to take full advantage of every opportunity his 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 offense is on the field. They've got to score every single time, just like the Eagles have to score every single time. Because if you can limit his opportunities, yeah, you usually get eight to twelve possessions a game. If you can limit it to the eight, the lower of the possessions, then you have a fighting chance. You have to win the clock. You have to man. The time possession has to be your friend. Because that means that that other guy is off the field and not out there on the field. Give you an opportunity to stay on the field in which you can go out there and score. They're going to have to keep it, man. No no scoring early. You know what I'm saying? No going down to scoring fast. This should be the perfect game to showcase your ability to run the rock. Yep. That's all. So, I I mean, I can't wait, man. You know, now, Tampa – uh, playing against Carolina, who stinks, right? Did not score. Actually, Carolina scored on their first possession a touchdown. Tampa's first possession was a three and out punt, then a field goal, then a three and out punt against it's all, Carolina. 
it's all about it's all about the defense playing aggressive too. I mean, Eagles whether defense, you get, yeah, yes, whether you're aggressive and you get beat, it doesn't matter. You cannot let this team nickel and dime you to death. Well, that's what they did the first time exactly. back in week six. Yeah. You can't allow that to happen. Yeah, you have to be aggressive and take shots. Yeah, take shots when you can take shots. Be aggressive. And what I mean by take shots on the defensive side of the ball, try to jump a route, play closer to the guy. You know, try to reroute him a little bit. Those are all things that you know at least throw the timing off of Brady and his receivers or Brady and his tight ends. Try to throw that timing off. Give your defensive line an opportunity to make Brady uncomfortable. If they don't make Brady uncomfortable, get him off his spot and play aggressive at the start of the snap. Yeah. It'll be a long day. It'll pick you apart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, we'll take a short time out. Be back with more of the final half hour of the middle on a Monday. Coming up, it's playoff week, people. Back in three.